We're now going to do an example of an optimization problem. The problem is to find the maximum of the function f equals x squared plus y squared plus x squared y plus 4 on the domain d, which is the square with vertices 1, 1, 1, minus 1, minus 1, minus 1, and minus 1, 1, including its boundary. Now f is continuous, and this domain is closed and bounded. It's closed because the square contains its boundary. And so the extreme value theorem says that f does have a global maximum somewhere on this domain. Now, of course, the function f, as written, is defined for any real numbers x and y, but we're only interested in f on this domain, on this square. So we're going to look for a maximum on the square. And the extreme value theorem says that it exists, and we know that it has to be either a critical point or a point on the boundary or a point where the partial derivatives of f are not defined. Now, f is differentiable, so there are no points of the last kind, so we know that the maximum is a critical point or a point on the boundary of t. So let's first find the critical points. So we calculate the partial derivatives, fx equals 2x plus 2xy, which I could factor as 2x times 1 plus y. And fy is 2y plus x squared. And now we set these equal to 0. So if fx is equal to 0, then one of these factors has to be equal to 0, and 2 is not equal to 0. So at least if we're not in the field of two elements. OK, that's a little math joke. OK, so either x is 0 or y is equal to minus 1. Now, in each of these cases, we can use the equation if y equals 0 to get more information. So if x equals 0, then if we combine this with the equation if y equals 0, well, the equation f y equals 0, in this case, just says that y equals 0. And in the case y equals minus 1, well, we can use the equation f y equals 0, which now says that x squared equals 2. So x equals plus or minus the square root of 2. So there are two, sorry, three critical points. So 0, 0, square root of 2, comma, minus 1, and square root of, sorry, minus square root of 2, comma, minus 1. Now there's a little trap here. Do you see what it is? Well, we're supposed to find the maximum of f on this domain. And these last two critical points are not in the domain because the square root of 2 is bigger than 1. Okay. So these are not contenders for the maximum of f on the domain, because they're not in the domain. So our only candidate in the domain so far is 0, 0. And we calculate f at this point, and f of 0, 0 equals 4. So this is one candidate for the maximum of f. Now, we next have to check the boundary of d and look for maxima on the boundary. And then we'll get more candidates, and we just have to see which candidate has the largest value of f. So now let's do the boundary of the domain. So let's write f again. And our domain is the square.
Okay, so now we have to maximize f on the boundary. Now this boundary has four edges, and we can do one edge at a time using single variable methods. So let's first do the upper edge of the square. So here, y is fixed and equal to 1, and x varies between minus 1 and 1. And we have f of x comma 1. Um, so y is equal to 1, we get 2x squared plus 5. Now, we can maximize this by you know, solving for where the derivative is 0 and so on. Or we can just look at this and notice that it's a parabola, an upward parabola, centered at the origin. So its maximum is going to be on the two boundary points of this interval. So the maxima are f of minus 1 comma 1 equals f of 1 comma 1 equals 7. So these are new candidates for the maximum of f. And these already beat the previous candidate. So we saw that there's a critical point where f equals 4, but we now have found a different point where f equals 7. So that point where, where f equals 4 cannot be the maximum. These two points might be the maximum. We don't know yet because we have to do the other three edges. So the right edge is where x is fixed to be equal 1, and y now varies between minus 1 and 1. So when x equals 1, I have that f of 1 comma y equals y squared plus y plus 5. So we can minimize this, or sorry, maximize this. So we can first look at where the derivative is 0, and that's going to be at the point um, where 2y plus 1 equals 0. Um, however, that's going to be a local minimum. You can write down the details yourself and check. So the maximum has to be on the boundary of the interval. So the only candidates we have are f of 1 comma 1 equals 7. We, we've already seen that one. And also f of 1 comma minus 1. And f of 1 comma minus 1 is just 5. So this is a new candidate for the maximum, although it's not going to win because we already have a point where f is equal to 7, which is bigger than 5. Okay, so the left edge so here x equals minus 1, and again y goes between minus 1 and 1, and here the formula for f is exactly the same as it was before. So f of minus 1 comma y is y squared plus y plus 5. So the candidates we get here um, are f of 1, 1 equals 7, and f of 1 minus 1 equals, sorry, minus 1, 1 is 7, and minus 1 minus 1 equals 5. And this one we've already seen before. And this one, well, it's not going to win. In fact, I don't know why I even bothered putting a box around this, because it's not the boundary on this interval. So let's just let's just cross this out, because it's not going to win. Okay. So there's, there's nothing new here. This is, this is our best contender so far. And now finally, finally, we have to do the bottom edge. So this is where y is fixed to equal minus 1, and x goes between minus 1 and 1. So here, f of x comma minus 1, you notice that it's actually equal to a constant, because I have a plus x squared and a minus x squared, and then y is just a constant. So f is equal to 5 on the entire bottom edge. So the maximum on the bottom edge is 5, which is attained everywhere. Um, but
but that's not going to win. So we're done. There's not, there are no more candidates. So what candidates did we find? So we found the critical point in the interior is where f is equal to 4 at the origin. And then we maximize on each of the edges. So on the upper edge, it's maximized at these two points where f is equal to 7. On the right edge, it's maximized at one of these points we've already seen. On the left edge, it's maximized at one of these points we've already seen. On the bottom edge, it's maximized on the whole bottom edge. Um, but um, So we have these candidates, but none of these is going to win because 7 is bigger than 5. So the winner is, is um, these two points. So the global maximum, or the global maxima of f on d are the points minus 1 comma 1 and 1 comma 1, where f equals 7. And by the theory we've done, we know that anywhere else on this domain, f is going to have to be less than 7.